chair lays out House Bill 2006 and recognizes Representative Cody Harris to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, I appreciate the opportunity to lay this bill out before the committee today. Uh, currently, for an adopted person to get a copy of their original birth certificate, they must petition the court in which their adoption took place. Getting access to an original birth certificate is extremely difficult, and the rules guiding access to them are vague and open to broad interpretation by the presiding judge in each court. House Bill 2006 requires the state registrar of vital statistics upon written request to provide to an adopted person over the age of 18 or a specific family member of a deceased adopted person a non-certified copy of the adopted person's original birth, birth certificate. Members, this is the exact same bill that this committee voted out unanimously last session, and it, we sent it out of the House by a vote of 144 to 1. It was one of the many mass House bill casualties over in the Senate. So uh, with that, I would uh, re request the right to clear, close, and uh, we'll defer to witnesses to speak for the bill. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman Harris. Uh, members, any questions? Chairman Harris. All right, we'll give you the opportunity to close. Chair calls Noel Johnson. Mr. Johnson, we uh, have you registered as Noel Johnson representing Support Texas Adoptee Rights and yourself testifying today for the bill. Is that all correct? That is correct, sir. All right. Thank you. you may begin your testimony. Um, I'm here today in support of House Bill 2006. I have testified on this bill in the past as a adult Texas adoptee. I realize the importance of having access to this first and foremost human right to have your original vital record. Um, I have had the luxury of having uh, the resources, many of you know me in other capacities here um, at the Capitol. Um, I've had the luxury of resources in investigative skills, political connections, um, in order to obtain my original birth certificate and still ran into um, some major loopholes. I was able to obtain the name of my birth mother as it was written on my original birth certificate, which then requires vital records in the state to provide you, once you provide that name as it's listed on the birth certificate, vital records is required to provide you the non-certified copy of that document. However, due to an error of human error with a clerk at vital records, even though I had all the information required to obtain my original birth certificate, I was denied my original birth certificate until I went back and provided my biological mother's maiden name, which was not the name that was listed on the original birth certificate. So if somebody like me, who has all the resources available to them in the world, um, can run into great difficulty obtaining their first medical record, their first vital record, um, how much more difficult is it for other Texas adults that don't have the resources and have to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to figure out who they are and where they came from? We're not asking for children to have this right. We're asking for adult Texans to have the same right as anybody else to have access to their original birth certificate. And I thank you and I'll answer any questions. Members, any questions of the witness? We thank you for coming back and thanks for your testimony. I remember it from last session and uh, pretty, pretty incredible. You make a very good point. So thank you for coming back. Thanks to the committee. Thank you. Chair call Shauna Hodgson. Ms. Hogston, we have you registered as Shauna Hogston, representing Texas Adoptee Rights uh, Coalition and yourself, and you're testifying today for the bill. Is That's that correct. correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Shauna Hodgson, and I'm testifying today in favor of House Bill 2006. I'm a Texas-born adoptee, and I'm a sixth-generation Texan by birth. I'm the spokesperson of the Texas Adoptee Rights Coalition, and I serve on the board of American Adop Adoption Congress and Adoptees United. 
Current Texas law requires adult adoptees to know the names of the people listed on their original birth certificate to qualify for a non-certified copy, or adoptees may petition the court where their adoption was finalized. Beginning in the mid-2000s, I made two attempts at petitioning a Harris County court for my own information. On the first attempt, my petition was immediately denied. The judge stated that he could find no just cause to grant my request. What is just cause for wanting your own vital birth, birth certificate? Non-adopted Texans are not required to show just cause for requesting their own documents. On my second petition attempt, a different judge insisted I get permission, a permission letter from my adoptive parents. I was 40 years old at the time, a business owner, a mother of four children, one of whom was in college. My adoptive parents, of course, were more than happy to write the letter for me, but on principle, I refused to go that route. How infantilizing it is, it is it to stand in front of a courtroom full of people and have a judge tell you to get your parents' permission for anything, let alone your own documents. It was about as infantilizing as it is for me, with all due respect, to stand before you today and make a case for why I, as a taxpayer, a business owner, a wife, a mother of four grown children, deserve the basic right to my own vital record of birth. All I wanted was my birth certificate, but when I turned to the state for the document they created in my name for my benefit to document my birth, I was denied. In 2014, after becoming exhausted by the court process, I decided to use DNA testing to identify my birth family. I submitted my samples to three different companies and, took, and seven months later, after a second cousin match turned up, I identified my birth family. It only took me four hours to identify my birth mother from that match. And I think you guys all have a handout um, there and it's two different images, they're flow charts. One is a picture of like what it would look like if you went through DNA testing. And then the other is just straight access, which is what HB 2006 will provide for us if enacted. Um, so I was now eligible to re request my original birth certificate. So I drove to Austin a month later, made the request and received my birth certificate one week later. The state could no longer deny me what was mine, but I was very wrong in thinking that. Hurricane Harvey hit in 2017 and my family and I were forced to evacuate our house in the early morning hours. We lost our home and nearly all of our belongings, including the copies of my original birth certificate. Months later, I requested a second copy of my original birth certificate and was denied. The reason, the vital statistics office informed me that I was only eligible for one lifetime copy. I pushed back and enlisted the help of my colleague, Gregory Luce, who's an adoptee rights attorney. After several letters and emails, the state finally conceded and fulfilled my request. This was yet another reminder of the systemic bias against adopted people and how when we try to exercise what rights we do have, we are repeatedly denied as a result. The bias exists as a result of the prevailing myths and tropes about adopted people and the culture of secrecy that has tainted adoption practices for nearly a century. The same secrecy that hid my existence from my older biological brother, who was three when I was born. With guidance from the adoption agency, a family member told him I had died at birth and even showed him a gravestone, my gravestone, a few rows down from our grandparents in our East Texas family cemetery. And I actually brought a picture of that gravestone um, today. And it says infant marshal, you'll see it. And I've actually never spoken about this publicly, so I'm a little emotional, I apologize. Um, I was also always acutely aware of how secrecy harmed me as an adoptee, but it wasn't until I stood over my own grave with my brother did I realize how absurd it truly was. The truth will always come out no matter how deeply you try to bury it. Someone tried to bury me, but here I am. Adoptees are often argued over and used as political footballs, but we are rarely, if ever, included in laws that seal our own birth records and ultimately make us disappear. But we keep searching and we find our truths even though we're told we don't deserve them. Even when we're told our erased identity is the price that we should pay for being adopted. All of us, every single one of us, all of you everywhere in the world, regardless of the systems that brought us into this world, have an inherent human right to know who we are and from whence we come. A birth certificate is not a mechanism by which to deny human being knowledge of their own origins. It was created to inform the person to whom it was registered. It was created before an adoption occurred and is not an adoption record. It is a birth record. And yes, a genealogical record. I'm the fourth great granddaughter of Elizabeth Goodnight, sister of Texas hero, Charlie Goodnight. I can now proudly pass that document down to my own children. If Texas is to pride itself on being a pro-adoption state, 
It can start by treating those of us who live adoption for, from the cradle to the grave with dignity and most of all, equality. I thank you for your time and consideration and I urge you to vote yes to advance House Bill 2006. Ms. Ogden, thank you for your testimony. I thank appreciate you. that. Thank you for your persistence. And I started listening so intently, I forgot to cut you off at three minutes. So. And I realized I heard a little beep, and I thought, I think I'm over <laughs> my time, but they're going to let me go. But it was, it was very, very uh, illustrative, and we appreciate the, um, the written materials as well. Are there any questions for the witness? Okay. Really, thank you for being here. We appreciate thank it. Thank you all. Thank you. Chair calls Joellen Peters. Ms. Peters, uh, we show you registered as Joellen Peters, representing Support Texas Adoptee Rights and yourself, and you're testifying today for the bill. Is that correct? That is correct. Please proceed. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Representative Harris, for bringing HB 2006 to the House. Um, I'm Joellen Peters. I'm speaking in support of HB 2006. I'm an adopted person. I'm also a licensed clinical psychologist who works with adoptees, birth parents, and adoptive parents um, in Austin. I'm board president of Support Texas Adoptee Rights, which is a nonprofit that's been working since 2015 to restore OBC access to adopted adults in Texas. And I'm testifying today really to kind of discuss um, a narrow policy issue that's relevant to HB 2006. Um, there's many people who have testified to some of the emotional parts and the you know, more meaningful parts, but this is a policy issue. Um, so when a child is born, that original birth certificate is issued. And in an infant adoption, a birth parent has to wait 48 hours before they can relinquish their parental rights. So an adoption then legally can take place any time between six months, six years, 16 years after that relinquishment occurs and after the birth occurs. During that time between the birth and the adoption, however long that is, the original birth certificate is not sealed, okay? Um, once the adoption legally occurs, a supplementary birth certificate is issued containing the names of the adoptive parents and removing the birth parent's name. Um, up until that point, the original birth certificate has served as the child's primary identity document, whether that's for six months or six years or 16 years. And it is available. The birth parent's identity is kept private from the public, of course, but those who would have access to the uh, regular birth certificate would have access to that birth certificate. Thus, there is no state of privacy right for a birth parent in Texas law, past or present, regarding birth certificates. In fact, because of DNA, it is foolhardy to make any promises of privacy to anyone who is genetically related to another person. You can easily find, as Shauna pointed out, within four hours, somebody. Um, so HB 206, 2006 would simply end outdated policies that restrict access. Starr's catchphrase is vital records are vital. And that became very clear to me this past summer. Um, I now bear a scar right here from the removal of a melanoma. 23 years ago, I obtained my medical information that my biological father died of melanoma. Um, and at that time, my personal physician offered me twice yearly skin checks to the dermatologist, ordered those. And um, this melanoma that I found, it looked like a freckle. I never would have known if I didn't have that medical information. That vital record is vital. That's why I'm here today. We did believe that the other 600,000 adoptees deserve the same right to access that information. Thank you Thank very you. much for your testimony. Are there any questions of the witness members? We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Chair calls Elizabeth Geronovich. Ms. Jernovich, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's the ex-husband's name. You can pronounce it however you like. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, but uh, 
I guess I'm going to clarify so we don't make any mistakes. You're registered as Elizabeth Jurinovich, and you're representing Abrazo Adoption Associates and yourself testifying today for the bill. Is that all correct? Yes, sir. Okay, please proceed. My name is Elizabeth Jurinovich. I am a licensed psychotherapist and the founder and director of Abrazo Adoption Associates, a Texas licensed nonprofit adoption agency and strategic partner in the Texas Adoptee Rights Coalition. My adoption career began in Texas in 1987, and I have experience in both closed and open adoptions. If you've never witnessed what happens on placement day when a child moves from one family to another, I've brought a couple of photos on the premise that a picture is worth a thousand words. These are actual adoptees and birth parents and adoptive parents, and I have their permission to use these photos and to share them with you because at my agency, adoption is not a secret and it has never needed to be. Even back in the 80s, it was common practice for adoptive parents and birth parents to meet when a child was being placed for adoption. Nevertheless, adoptees' original birth records in Texas continue to get sealed by the courts at the time that adoptions are finalized. Adoptees' birth certificates are altered by the Texas Bureau of Vital Statistics to presumably document that the adoptive parents birthed the adoptee wherever that child was born, regardless of whether those parents were even present for that birth. Obviously, the birth mothers know to whom the birth occurred. The adoptive parents know it too. This information and the facts regarding who actually produced the child need not be hidden from either one of them. It is, however, concealed by Texas law from the one person to whom it will actually matter the most, the adoptee. As an adoption professional, I've been trained to respect the adoptee's right to know their own birth facts. It's unhealthy to change to hide this information from adoptees. This practice of restricting adoptees' birth certificate access made no sense to me 36 years ago, and it still doesn't today. As a parent, as a therapist, and as a child welfare professional, I recognize the importance of honesty and transparency in identity formation. In the child-centered adoptions I've done over the past three and a half decades, the parents who surrender children and the parents who adopt don't expect to be hidden from each other. Adults who were adopted as children should have the same legal right to their own birth records as any other American. For adult adoptees to be denied their own original birth certificate truly is government interference. Restricted access to their own Vital records perpetually infantilizes adoptees. It denies them needed access to their own cultural and medical history, and it is a gross violation of their civil rights. Ms. Jurinovich, I need to stop you right there and ask the panel if they have any questions. I know you're reading from this statement, and we have a copy of this, so we appreciate you providing that as well. Are there any questions for the witness? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for listening. Chair calls Andrew Brown. Good morning, Mr. Brown. We have you registered as Andrew Brown, representing the Texas Public Policy Foundation today for House Bill 2006. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is. All right, please proceed. Good morning. My name is Andrew Brown. I oversee child and family policy for the Texas Public Policy Foundation. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of House Bill 2006. Nearly every court in the country restricts public access to and seals documents relating to adoption proceedings to ensure the privacy and confidentiality of birth families, adopted children, and adoptive parents. Interestingly, this practice of restricting access to records for even the parties to an adoption is a relatively new phenomenon, historically speaking. It wasn't until around the 1920s that, the party, that states began amending their adoption laws to prevent the parties to that adoption from obtaining copies of records except in cases where good cause is shown. This was largely done under the theory that restricting access would, to quote a document published by the Child Welfare League of America in 1938, shield the adoptee from unnecessary embarrassment in the case of illegitimacy. As you've heard today, an adoptee in Texas must petition a court that ordered their adoption and show good cause to receive a non-certified copy of their original certificate, as well as other important documents related to that adoption. 
and should be noted that this requirement of petitioning the court is not required if the adoptee knows the identity of each parent listed on the birth certificate. And as the practice of adoption has changed in recent years and moved toward greater openness among the parties, the current system for tightly restricting the adoptee's access to their records is becoming increasingly antiquated. House Bill 2006 recognizes this reality and updates Texas law to make it easier for adoptees who have reached adulthood to obtain their original birth certificate and other important documents relating to their adoption. And although I strongly believe that every person has the right to know who they are and where they came from, I also recognize the other side's position that others involved in the adoption, and especially that birth parent who made the difficult decision to place their child for adoption, have important rights that also must be recognized and respected. And sometimes these rights are in tension with one another, uh, but balancing these rights is not impossible. And there are several models employed by other states that achieve this goal in a less burdensome manner than current Texas law. I have some copies of research that we've done on this topic uh, that actually outlines not only Texas law, but as well as some of these other models, thank you very much, um, for you all to take a look at. No. I want to thank Representative Harris for bringing this excellent piece of legislation and for his heart for all of those touched by adoption. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions, Mr. Brown? Thank you. We appreciate you being here and appreciate the written materials as well. Is there anyone else wishing to testify for, on, or against House Bill 2006? We do not show you registered at this can I, time. Can I do that? I wanted to testify against. Sorry to cause it. She can help you out. Okay. Can I testify and then register? No. no. Or can I? Here. Chair calls Joe Poyman. Uh, Mr. Poyman, we have you registered as Joe Poyman, representing Texas Alliance for Life uh, in opposition to House Bill 2006. Is that correct? Yes, it is, sir. Okay, please proceed. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'm so sorry about that. That's fine. My name is Dr. Joe Poyman. I'm executive director of Texas Alliance for Life, and we respectfully oppose this bill, House Bill 2006, or 2006. We're very sympathetic to the, to the point of view of the author and the witnesses in support of this bill. But we want to make two points. First, we believe that when a birth mother and a birth father places a baby for adoption, 
with the understanding that they will that they will be and remain anonymous, the state of Texas should honor that agreement. If a woman is raped, raped, becomes pregnant and wishes to place that baby in anonymity, we should honor the intent of that mother. She may have placed that child for adoption instead of seeking abortion, knowing that she will remain anonymous throughout the rest of her life. Second, I wish to call attention to the state's central adoption registry, which is easily found on the DSHS website. The registry matches the birth parents and the adult adoptees if all parties are willing. And I understand there are thousands of parties who have, have um, joined that registry and are being matched. That registry is a terrific resources and I think would solve a lot of the problems that we're hearing about right now. And we just haven't heard about this and when I've come in the previous years, I have never heard anyone mention that registry. So I just want to call that attention to you and anyone else. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions witness of this witness? We appreciate you thank registering you. and thank you for being here. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on for or against House Bill 2006? Hearing none, Chair calls Chair Harris to close on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. I, I do want to uh, thank the volunteers like uh, Noel and Joe Ellen and all the others who have worked so hard on, on this legislation for so many years. Um, and, and I want to make sure that the committee knows that, that I don't bring this legislation lightly. I bring it as an adoptive father with a daughter whose birth records are sealed and something that my wife and I have given great consideration to. Um, but with that said, I, I appreciate the committee's time and would request favorable recommendation to the local and consent calendar. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you for bringing the bill. If there's no objection, House Bill 2006 will be left pending. The chair hears no objection. House Bill 2006 is left pending without objection.